I played every Gears game, except for Gears of War Judgment, but whatever, I'm not gonna. I beat every main Gears game except for Gears 4 mainly because it got way too difficult on the setting I was playing it at, plus it was more of the same. And I felt the story was rather blasé. I was ready for something fresh, something we totally haven't seen before. In Gears 4, I felt if I was just going through the motions or something, so I quit somewhere near the end of the game on Hardcore or what is now called Experience Mode for whatever reason. This difficulty mode is right before Insane, and I just beat Gears 5 on Experience Solo. It was very challenging to just utterly brutal at times, and the difficulty kept getting more challenging until the game reminded me of Halo 2 on Heroic Setting meets Apocalypse Now. The game becomes straight up punishing Warzone-like experience at times. Right now, you're seeing a mixer stream I uploaded into this video that was one of the more difficult encounters I faced during the game. This Gears 5 campaign punishes you with wave after wave of harder and harder challenges with usually no checkpoints in between, or a few if you are very lucky. I apologize for the quality of this video, as streaming on Mixer does cause problems with video footage at times. In this game, you have a choice of playing several different characters. I played as Marcus Phoenix's son, who I really liked in this game, and I played as Kate. Thinking back, this campaign is truly a journey. I felt tired and exhausted at the end, literally. This video doesn't have spoilers, but there's a part near the end where you have to make an important choice and there's no good choice you can make. And I felt stuck between a rock and a hard place and felt truly guilty of the choice I had to make. And my choice stuck in the back of my mind until the credits started rolling. This game stepped it up on every level from every other Gears game. This game has a whole nine yards, including this time your bot Jack who just opened doors for you on the previous game does much more now and is a very valuable member of your squad. Jack now has an upgrading system where he can do a number of things from, from shielding you from the gun and missile fires to hacking AI baddies to electrical shock enemies to stun them which will make them lose their cover so you can get a clean shot on them. I really felt like Jack was very handy and I cared about him and I got upset when enemies would shoot at him. You can't shoot at my little buddy. You can combat this very well, though, by making him more durable. You can upgrade him by finding parts throughout the map, so exploration is a very vital element of this game. There are two different parts in the campaign where you get a wind skiff and travel from point to point over long treks of land, which was something Gears has never done before. And that was a big risk on their point, so they do get points for the risk. I heard about these maps in other reviews I saw, and some people compared these maps to Metro Exodus's maps. I couldn't possibly disagree anymore with that assessment. The maps are mostly barren. I would compare these maps to more of like a Mass Effect Andromeda map, even graphically almost. The Gears graphics are excellent for the most part. Cutscenes look phenomenal, and some cutscenes look like real life. But it's like with the Windskiff maps, in my opinion, the developers were going for a big map more than fantastic graphics in those areas. And in my opinion, the graphics do lack a bit in those areas, except for maybe one part in the second giant Windskiff map where there are weather anomalies and crazy looking clouds and that looks pretty stellar. Gears of War has always been famous for being some of the best looking games out there and still impressed very much for the most part. Some of the big maps are, are wide open spaces and big giant warehouses that are really spacious. A few places look like they were taken right out of a Titanfall 2 campaign map, and I'm not dogging that. I think it really does look great. One of the things Gears 5 nailed graphically was the lighting. The lighting is on point like I've never seen before in a Gears game. I played Gears 5 on the Xbox One X. I got full 4K with 60 frames per second. It runs very smoothly and I can't think of any frame rate issues I had at all. For the graphics and frame rate, I give Gears a 9. The sound and voice acting of the game, from the dialogue, from the punchy guns, to the skiff sliding and carving in the snow, to the music was perfect. This score is very much what you would expect in a Gears game. 
an epic, aggressive, hard-hitting symphony, and changes the different situations you put yourself in. Everything sounded great. There is a lot of voice dialogue in this game, too, so if you like to listen to podcasts or gaming like I do, then you might be a bit stuck. Lots and lots of talking. But it really works for the story's development, so I have no real beef with that. The developers are giving this story and game their all. I could tell they were. The voice acting's perfect. It was as good as any well-done movie or TV series, or in this case, video game. I was drawn in by the characters. I cared and sympathized with them. And character development was spot on. The locusts sound meaner than ever, too. Chilling at times and very intimidating. Sound and voice acting is a 10. The campaign story was great. This Gears has the most engaging story of the whole franchise, in my opinion. And many of the other Gears games have great stories, too, for sure. I thought these guys were real people going through a real struggle, and I was part of it. I was discovering and uncovering crazy premises to the story with the characters. I was just as engaged as the characters were in the game at times. The story gets a 10. The gameplay and the map. This game should be played on experience. This is the way the game is meant to be played. I'm telling you, it's a massive undertaking and you're gonna die a lot of times until you figure out what works. It's a game that becomes a chess game, chess match of trial and error. There were a few times where I was going to lower the difficulty because it was and is that difficult, but I didn't and almost always seemed to conquer the challenge the moment I was gonna lower the gameplay difficulty. One time I was truly going to lower it at the end of a chapter and the game prompt told me that if I do lower my difficulty it will be noted that I played the chapter on a lower level. I couldn't bring myself to do that and at that point I beat one of the hardest boss battles in the game. The map is great, no prompts at all. With that other than the game does increasingly get harder and you do feel surrounded at times but that is the whole point. Another great side note about the gameplay and the combat mechanics, the developers throw more at you than you would ever normally be able to handle, which encourages you to find more parts for Jack, and when he's upgraded enough, you can handle much more than you'd ever be able to, normally. This takes a heck of a lot of multitasking while in a huge battle, but you will just have to die until you get it right. This game knows exactly what it is. There are also side quests where you can go into Windskiff, and you can find more parts to upgrade Jack, so that's an important part of the game as well. I had some minor glitches here and there. Once or twice I had to restart the game on account of a glitch. This is almost expected nowadays with a brand new game that was just released, and I bet it will be patched up again in no time. The glitches are minor, the gameplay and map gets a 9. And would get a 10 probably if the skiff part had more of a point other than some story development through dialogue, the side quest, and hitting jumps was okay, I guess, maybe. Horde mode is horde mode. It's the same horde mode we all know and love. Escape mode is a new online game where you start out with almost nothing but a snub pistol and sparing ammo. You plan a poison gas bomb, go through basically a maze, and carefully pick off enemies by any means possible, collect guns and ammo from the dead, while the deadly gas is chasing you. It starts out small and gets very difficult. I played it on normal and got punished. There are minor microtransactions for certain skins, but I got a Gabadisa skin just for playing the game as I literally started the game the first minute it was released. I had limited time playing it online, but I got a good feel for it. Online is good for the most part. I played the campaign online one time and the person playing Jack by the way, you can play as Jack, too, online, which is pretty different, but the one character person uh, online playing Jack wouldn't do anything, and my partner and I were stuck in the dark and couldn't see anything, and that was really aggravating. There are minor microtransactions, but no play-to-win BS. Uh, Gears invented the famous horde mode, so that's still great. What I played was mostly great. Online multiplayer gets an 8.5. With all my numbers calculated, the average score of Gears 5 gets a well-deserved 9.3. My favorite gun in the game is the Marksa MK1 Marksman Rifle. My favorite Jack ordinances are the Shock Trap, the Barrier, and I upgraded his health entirely. After I played Gears 5, I felt torn. Gears 2 was always my favorite, and I rated that in my last video as a 9. 
Gears 2 might not be my favorite Gears anymore. This might be. This game gets a higher rating than Gears 2, as it should, in my opinion. There's a lot more to it. Tell me if you agree or disagree with my scoring of Gears 5. Tell me if you played Gears 5. Tell me what your favorite Gears game is. Hit that like button if you think this video deserves it and subscribe if you want to see more of my content and ring that bell because I have a lot more content coming. Blessings.